my life in Spanish Lake uh, was full of lots of great memories, and it was filled with a lot of sad memories. Uh, it was, it's a very bittersweet recollection. Uh, Spanish Lake was brought to me by Philip. Um, him and I have been friends for about seven, eight years now. And he would constantly talk to me about his hometown and what it was like growing up. And he had gone back and experienced a change there and it emotionally affected him. Going back home in 2007, uh, it was one of the worst days of my life. I mean, I think back on that day, it's just true sadness. But out of that sadness came this project. I helped find the funding. Um, I helped organize the interviews, get our crew in place. This was a small operation with Philip and I, so we sort of had to wear many hats. This film was extremely low budget. I, it's even, I can't even get over how low our budget is today. All right. Or yes. come up and make a <laughs> stay. Sound rolling. Roll. All right, 139. We had a pretty small crew. Um, we had our cinematographer, we had our sound guy, we had a couple production assistants, and then myself and Philip. My favorite memories making Spanish Lake are definitely um, the filming. Meeting all these new people I never would have met, um, usually on the fly, knocking on people's doors and just having, having the audacity to just introduce yourself. But we knew that you weren't gonna get the good interviews if you were afraid. We had to be able to go in, be smart about what we were doing and talk to people. Having a discussion about race is a challenge for any community. So to be a part of a conversation that could be hard to have was really, really, really interesting. The worst experience making Spanish Lake. There was a lot of loss going on in my life at the time. At the beginning of filming, I had a relationship that imploded and that was hard to deal with. Um, I had some, some stress with some family members. I had a, a really close friend of mine die and I had to, to gather the strength to keep on going. I know our story has a lot of like hard discussion, but there was a lot of playfulness and we got like to get down with people. I'm the movie star today. <laughs> Spanish Lake is my home. Almost like he knows when you're about to talk. I understand. Maybe scoot back. You're getting, like, How far back? Not too far back. <laughs> The closure that I sought out in 2007 when I went back to my old house on Maple, the universe has conspired to give me that closure and through making this film. The one response that we got from Craigslist would be the woman that lived in his former home. Um, I wasn't expecting it to be that, and so when I'm having the conversation with Philip on where we're supposed to go to have this interview and then to see his reaction as he started to figure out where this home was, I mean, it was mind-blowing. We almost had to pull the car over to be like, wait, what? I wasn't planning on putting it in the film. I only filmed it for the behind-the-scenes documentary. However, when we put the film together, we didn't really have an ending, and it was just such a powerful coincidence that I decided to share it, but I didn't want to be on camera. And today I'm joined by Philip Andrew Morton, the director of Spanish Lake, and his producer, who are here to talk about their uncompromising documentary, which follows white flight out of Spanish Lake, Missouri, which is only eight miles away from Ferguson, which I'm sure uh, you are well aware of, um, and the crisis there since Michael Brown was shot and killed. What began as peaceful protests quickly deteriorated into chaos with tear gas and gunfire, injuries to authorities and protesters. Four officers were injured and at least two people were shot. Michael Brown's mother called for calm. Warrenburg theaters have decided not to show the film Spanish Lake at local theaters when it's released this year. The filmmaker tells RFT theater officials were concerned about showing a movie that highlights the issues underlying the issues that are happening in Ferguson right now. Ferguson was, it was so crazy that that happened as our film was about to release. I mean, I sort of struggled with the fact that we're releasing a film during a time of strife when someone died and there's a, a big commentary about it. Unfortunately, Ferguson has happened. I hope that people can seek out the film and watch it and maybe have a better understanding as to how um, racial inequality and economic inequality exists and what they can do to not only prevent it in the future, but maybe fix it in the present. 